so just got uh, done with uh, some of the pig chores, kind of swing around this way. There you go, see behind me there. So we are starting to create a wallow for these guys here uh, during the day. We're up into the 90s, so it's very warm for these guys. You can see they're out this morning with me, up first thing in the morning. You know, they're kind of ideal temps are 55 to about 70 to 80 degrees, and it's definitely a little bit warm, so they like that water right in the middle. Uh, so they play around in the water, it's kind of cool to see, and they were kind of playful this morning, but they're all back after having breakfast and taking a little bit of a nap. You can see back there, we actually finally got our trailer, our livestock trailer. We picked that up last night and uh, got it from Wickenburg Trailer Sales. Those are some great guys. If you guys are here in the valley looking for a trailer, those are great guys to go to. It took us, I think, about five weeks for it to get it in. They're just super, super busy. A lot of people buying trailers these days. Um, but we've got that set up. We're gonna talk a little bit about how we're gonna build a chute leading up into that uh, for these pigs. And we kinda, when we move them onto this area, we kinda had that in mind as far as how we were setting this up. Um, so we're gonna kind of work on that a little bit today and then a sneak peek over here You guys uh, are watching this. Hopefully if I can get this tomorrow. It's Easter Sunday. So happy Easter um, But uh, this we haven't talked about yet because I don't think I'm gonna get that video up today um, But hopefully I'll have it for you next week and talk a little bit more about that in detail All right, so uh, you probably heard in my voice. Uh, I am totally exhausted uh, We have like pretty much hit a wall these days uh, with everything going on and some final things we need to get done. Um, and we got live stream with you guys today. So I'm gonna go over and help Lori with those chores. And then we got a couple other things we wanna try to knock out before breakfast, which we haven't eaten yet this morning. Heading over here to the uh, layers, you can see we've got the hens out on pasture this morning. They really love the pasture. It's definitely starting to die back. It's got some rough spots back here. And you know, we got these broilers in kind of late. So typically we'd like to have them finishing about now. So the beginning of April. But I uh, actually can get a shot there. Got a little bit of brown back there. So we're gonna see kind of how that does. One of the things that we saw coming up on the pasture, I'm pretty sure from what we planted earlier, was alfalfa. And as we move the tractor, you'll see it back there. As we move the tractor, we're actually overseeding alfalfa behind it to see if we can get some greens for these girls here this summer. Uh, okay, I need to get over here and get this stuff. The poop turned. Wanna grab the water? Grab the water. <laughs> it's not a poop throwing contest. <laughs> Alright, I want to give you guys a quick shot of these mulberries here. Hopefully the sun doesn't get in our faces too much, but yeah, there we go. So you can see. These are just looking beautiful, completely loaded with mulberries. And then we have the coop and run. Actually, it's kind of nice because when you drive in, the main road coming into the farm, this is kind of what you see. And you'll have just this beautiful green wall in front of this. Okay, we gotta help out the chickens here. Oh, <laughs> we got Lori pulling weeds. <laughs> Sweetheart, you're not gonna, you're not gonna catch up. <laughs> got weeds coming up everywhere. All right, so we need to get a dust bath, right? Here, hang on. Gonna, yeah, add some soil to their dust bath because it's getting low. Okay. Oh, look at her just standing up on the door. She's like, yep, this is my spot. Yep, gonna she's going to try to, there. yeah, she's literally going to try to just stay right there. What are you doing up there, girl? Huh? Is that your little roost? Your king of the roost? Queen of the roost? So, yep, that's my spot. Yeah, look how low it is. Oh, yeah. Add some of this in here and then just kind of turn it in. Definitely dusty. Yeah. You know, maybe add a lot of add a little bit of uh, that DE. Yeah, we can. All right. Which one? Which bucket is it? I think it might be this one. I can't remember. There's too many of them over here. Oh, it's this one. They're swapping positions here. Hey, girl. Is 
They're all coming in here. They want to see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hear the cows. Let's see if they coming in. Get some more water. All right, it's just a beautiful morning this morning. I want to peek in on the nuggets here real quick. You can see them there. We still have the heat lamp that we've got on them here. We'll keep that on them here in the mornings, probably for the next week or so, as we keep them in just this one tractor. And then they'll be way too big for just a single tractor. We'll have to split them up. And then of course, we're gonna start going across the pasture that way, hopefully get the other half. And you can see kind of where they've been over the last couple days. All right, so what I wanna do, I wanna give you guys an update. We had uh, talked to you a little bit about the lime tree across the street. You know, we uh, went and had to transplant or move Jake's lime tree and I was really concerned about that tree in fact it lost all of its leaves this winter here I was really concerned about that tree because of kind of what we did we really kind of butchered it as we moved it um, and wasn't too sure you can kind of see it right there it's pretty much looked like this all winter basically just a stick had me really concerned until I came by last week and noticed hopefully you'll be able to get this on camera that it actually is loaded with flower buds there. You can see here, it's got some new leaves coming in and definitely starting to bounce back. So really excited. I know Jake was excited too to see this growth in this tree. Now still definitely not out of the woods yet. Um, we've got 90 degree temps here today, but that's kind of key growth season for this tree and to see that growth coming out of it, that's a really, really good sign. So I'm really uh, starting to get a little bit more hopeful <laughs> that that tree is gonna come back. Okay, one other thing. So last night, Lori and I were watering the pasture back there and we have the free range cattle that come through all the time. And it's, you know, really kind of hot and dry and, you know, they're munching on all of the weeds that we have coming up with all the rains. Well, all the half inch or so of rain we've had. But I was back there watering the pasture and I thought, you know what, I'll bet you they're thirsty. And usually they keep, you know, a good 30 or 40 yards distance away from you. So I just kind of started spraying out here into the street and they all just started mobbing that water. So you guys know us when it comes to our different animals that we have coming in onto the property, wild animals or otherwise. And we try to take care of them uh, because, you know, they're attracted to that life. So we decided we were gonna go ahead and put these two really small plastic bins that we were using for the layers to give them something to stand in, water to stand in over the summer. So I put these out last night and they immediately kind of herded or ran away from me. But when I came back this morning, I saw hoof prints down here from them and these were completely empty. So they're definitely thirsty and we don't want to see that. So we're going to have to get some more water that we can keep outside of the gated areas or the fenced off areas so that we can take care of these free range cattle and make sure they've got water. We don't want to see them dying. Uh, so anyway, that was kind of cool to see. I'm going to head inside. We, it's, it's one of those, it's the time of year where we have the sun coming up a lot earlier and we're up early, but uh, we uh, usually had, we're having breakfast before we came outside and didn't have to stop, but it makes more sense to have some coffee and have some breakfast. Plus, it's beautiful this morning. I mean, I'm in shorts and a t-shirt already because it's probably 70 degrees out here. Chickens are happy. And uh, we are gonna sit on the patio, stare at the farm, and have a breakfast sandwich with you guys. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food. I pray that you have blessed our bodies and give us Thank you, in Jesus' name. You actually have some green. <laughs>
finally got all of those done. You can see this way as well. So all 12 of the beds have at least the main frames installed. We didn't get the hardware cloth in to finish these and we want to get planting. So we actually are going to plant a couple things. Well, at least one thing with you guys today. So we're going to show you what's going to go into one of those beds that can kind of wait for that to be there to protect it from birds. But one thing, <laughs> one thing I, I'm learning pretty quick when it comes to the tractor is even though I've got, I don't know, 60 or 70 hours of experience on it, I still don't always necessarily drive it very straight <laughs> and, or I'm not driving very careful and I did a good job of bending this post. Luckily it didn't uh, mess up any of the rest of the bed, but that means that uh, I have a, have a repair project to do. So Lori and I are gonna do this real quick and then we're gonna snap back to you and plant something here today. So got that fixed. All right, now we want to plant something with you guys today. We're gonna to be planting in that bed right over there. And it's something that we've actually been hanging on to for the last month or two. And we wanna get them in those beds to just kind of test out, see whether or not they're gonna work. So let's go flip over to there. Okay, so we're gonna plant a couple things with you guys here in these spring beds. Now, it was really strange this year. You know, we want to be above 50 degrees or so for seeds to germinate really well. We're finding that with some of the planting we did last weekend, but we needed to be above 50 so we knew everything was growing and that just started this week. So now we're up above 60 and we're kind of pushing up against that summertime here at the beginning of April. So what we're going to do in these beds is we're going to go ahead and plant what we know should do okay for now and what will definitely do well going into fall. What we're going to be doing is potatoes. So we've got a couple of red potatoes. We just bought some organic potatoes that we've let kind of start sprouting in the house. We've got a couple of those that we're going to put in this bed. And then we're going to put a couple, I think they're either russet or golden potatoes um, in these two beds here. So we're going to do regular potatoes first. And then we're also going to do sweet potatoes and we'll show you those. Now that we have those planted, we're gonna go ahead and just take some fish emulsion. That's what we have mixed here. It's about two tablespoons and about one gallon of water or so. Go ahead and get some of that in there. Remember this soil in here is the soil that we got from Pioneer. All it's had is just these wood chips all winter. We've been keeping it damp. You can see that with the soil. That's pretty much it. So we'll see how these do with just these. One other thing we're gonna be planting in these beds would be sweet potatoes, but we're a little behind the eight ball. So let me show you how we have those started. Here are the sweet potatoes. <laughs> we actually were really late on the start here, but these we act were actually harvested from the sweet potato we planted over in the berry beds. We kept them in the garage in a cardboard box. So it's nice and cool because it's north facing and we'll see how they do as far as rooting. I think they're gonna be just fine. So we do, a couple extra, we shouldn't need quite this many, and we can use this either as slips, we'll show you that once it starts, or we can plant them directly. We will probably just plant them directly, um, but we had success planting these in August last year, and we still got a harvest come fall, so we're not worried about these getting into the ground a little bit late, but it'll give us a nice green harvest, and of course, shade those beds really well. 
All right, last thing we wanna to try to get done with you guys today is we're gonna plant, well, harvest everything out of this bed, and then we're gonna plant a couple things in here. We are gonna leave the garlic. We're gonna do a separate harvest video on the garlic. Um, it looks like it's probably pretty close to done here at the beginning of April. So probably next week, I'm guessing. Um, we got a couple that kind of got a late start, so I'm not sure how those are gonna do, but that's not today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get our final harvest out of here. We've got some little good amount of spinach in here. We have some lettuce. Um, we are gonna leave that middle plant, which is actually some cauliflower. We're gonna leave that in there and see how it does here. It's late, so we'll see whether or not we get a harvest off of that or not, but we're gonna leave that. Otherwise, we need to get this bed cleared out and plant a couple, well, really one thing in there in particular that we'd like to try to get in this spring. So we went ahead and got that cleared out. I'd forgotten about some carrots that we have in there that are starting to come up. We're gonna leave those in there along with the garlic, see whether or not we get a harvest. And there's a couple of beets I'm just gonna leave alone. I wanna see how they do going into those hotter months and whether or not it'll give us some greens. So what I did might've been hard to pick up because I don't think I got any of it on camera, but I just took my Corona pruners, went down just below soil level and was cutting all the greens off and we've got a pretty good little harvest out of our worst performing bed here this winter. So this bucket is basically almost full of the spinach. Um, we've got some green leaf lettuce, this just looks amazing, and some small kale that we'll put into our smoothies. So got a five gallon bucket of that we'll bring into the house. So not too, too shabby out of our worst performing bed this winter. All right, that's done. Now what we're gonna do is plant. What we're gonna be putting in the ground is this Emerald Delight squash. We have, these seeds are a couple years old, so we'll see how they do. The instructions on here are to plant it, I think after the soil temp is 70 to 85 degrees, and that's probably about where we're at with this soil and definitely too cold to start them outside prior to basically this weekend. So we'll see how they do. We know that these squash, zucchini squash, taste amazing. So we're gonna put a couple of spots, try to get anywhere from two to four plants to take in this bed, see how they do going into the hottest part of the year. Well, you know, I think I've got four left. I do. Wow. The last thing we're gonna do with these is we're gonna go ahead and get them watered in. We're gonna use that fish emulsion, same mix, so about two tablespoons to about a gallon of water. Gonna get that down here. We're also gonna put some wood chip mulch around the area where they're planted just to make sure we keep moisture on there as best we can, because you, as you guys know, it is very hot and dry this time of year. So Lori and I are gonna, I think, wrap it up for today. We've got the live stream with you guys tonight and I wanna save my voice for that, but uh, got a lot of stuff coming together. Lori's uh, watering that in there. But we got a lot of stuff coming together. We have the pigs that are gonna be going to the processor in a few weeks. And you know, that's, a, that's one of those times where it's uh, really bittersweet. You know, we're definitely gonna miss them, um, but it's kind of part of this process. And we've got a few things we need to put together in order to do that. So we gotta build a shoot, which we're gonna do and show you guys um, how we're gonna try to try that this year. And then of course, using the trailer for the first time. In fact, I think I need to do a video on that trailer because it's actually a fantastic trailer if you're a horse owner or you think you may eventually be one. <laughs> and definitely a nice small livestock trailer because of how it can kind of do some converting and we'll cover that for you guys. Either way, you guys know how it works. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And you know how it goes. If we can do this on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Are your earbuds in? I do. Are you listening to music? I am. You're si I'm sitting here right next to you and you're listening to music and not listening to the beautiful birds chirping and stuff like that? I can that. hear that too, it's really low. You can disconnect, girl. No, I can hear everything. It's really low, but it seems to help my anxiety to have voices in my head. <laughs> oh my goodness. It helps your anxiety to have voices in your head? 
Yeah, yeah because then it doesn't make my mind go wandering everywhere because I'm hearing music. Are you hearing voices? <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the important part of that entire discussion. <laughs> well, it is voices because people sing it. Okay. All right. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't have those kind of voices in my head. <laughs> but would you tell me if you did? Mm -hmm. Alright. You can't be prideful when it comes to your eye protection. This is what you get when you forget your actual safety glasses and have to borrow your wife's bedazzled sunglasses. 